Hey, it's Aaron, and with me today is my son Aiden. We are going to talk about a 2023 Mercedes-Benz 450E. The E means it's plug-in hybrid. This is brand, brand new, so brand new that these aren't on the market yet, uh, but they will be sometime in the next couple of months. What month is it right now? Like April. So, you know, June or something? Right around there. Anyway, uh, this because it's plug-in hybrid, it can go all electric for a short amount of time, roughly 40 miles. My average has been more like 38, and I've run it down a couple of times, and it was about 38 miles for each of those charges, but it can do it at any speed. Uh, it has a 100 kilowatt motor, 100, yeah, that's right, 100 kilowatt motor, which is 134 horsepower, I think, and then a two liter four cylinder engine, that is, uh, I don't remember how big that is, but it, it ends up, it's a turbo four, it ends up being a total of 384 horsepower altogether. And that is... Um, all wheel drive is standard and it has a nine speed transmission. Nine. There you go. Nine speed transmission is an important part of this because uh, what that transmission is doing is it's translating the engine's output to the drivetrain while the motor is what is supplying the all wheel drive. So there is no connection, from, physical connection from the motor or the engine, I mean, to the rear axle. That is all electric back there. So when you're driving in all electric mode, it is mostly at the rear axle. Uh, there is an electric motor, I believe, in the transmission up front. If there's not, I'll just edit that part out. You won't even know I said it. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what we do. So Aiden, you've been driving it, you're riding in this all week, right? Uh, what do you think? You like it? Yeah, it's um, uh, I think the interior looks nice. I don't really feel any bumps. I feel, you know, it's pretty nice and comfortable to ride in. I'd say it's a little above average, but it's not, it's not anything super special, but I do like it. Cool. It is a luxury ride, uh, and it's not cheap. Um, I can't tell you pricing because they haven't told me the pricing, uh, but I f assume it's going to be up there in the 70 plus range. So it's not going to be on the low end. Uh, but again, you can get the 450 in, a, or the GLE especially, you can get that in a whole bunch of different setups. I have already done a video on the standard, uh, well, not standard, it's the AMG model, but it is the AMG model 450. Uh, and then there is a, a standard one, which actually I think uses the same engine. If I'm wrong on that, I'll edit it out. But <laughs> I think it uses this same engine for that one. And then what you have uh, all, so what you have in packaging is you have a low end that starts somewhere around, I believe it's 53 or 54,000 and then keeps going up. The AMG model was very expensive. It was around, I think 75 if I remember correctly. And this will be probably close to that in price. But for that, you're getting pretty close to 40 miles of all electric range. And if you have a 240 volt uh, outlet at your house, this will charge in as little as three hours. Uh, mine is a 50 amp dedicated circuit and it is charging this in less than three hours. Um, if you have a 120, so a standard household outlet, gonna take a little longer, probably more like six or seven hours, whatever. Um, that's just overnight, that's no big deal. Uh, which means you can drive around town most of the time for most of your driving without ever really using that gas engine. Uh, if, and that gas engine, or that electric motor, as I said before, you can go on the highway with that, still perfectly fine. Now, if you do go on the highway, your range is gonna drop really quickly, uh, but that's true of any electric. It's also true of gas vehicles. It's just how it is. So, Aiden, we're gonna have to also talk about design. So we'll come around the side, we'll talk about the design elements that are going on with this, uh, and then we'll get in the back, look at the working end a little bit, and inside to show you what the interior looks like. Okay, so from the side, you can see the design elements of the uh, GLE here. All of them pretty much look the same. There isn't a whole lot of difference. The biggest thing that differentiates this one from the others in the model is it has two fuel ports. This fuel port on this side, the right side of the vehicle, that is the actual fuel port where you pump gas. The other side has the same fuel port. That is where you plug it in. So both the fuel ports are on the rear, one on each corner. You can see from the lines that they went for a more SUV look. It is less coupe than the previous renditions of some of Mercedes uh, uh, SUVs have been. So it's flat in the front, um, fairly flat on the 
uh, on the hood, and then a hard rake for that windshield, and then a squarish body on top. That's the classic SUV shape. As I walk in so you can get perspective on the size, I'll show you, you can see the lines, how they're reflecting light. So this is probably not my favorite color for this, but it is a good color for reflection. So I'm at six foot three, Aiden over there is, what, five foot eight? So uh, not including his hair. So with that, you can kind of get an idea of how tall this vehicle is. And the body lines are very good at reflecting what's happening. So you see right here on the hood, this kind of dips a little bit and it comes up, creates this light shelf right here. That shelf varies. So the angle of it moves like this as it goes along to there and joins that A pillar. And then along here, you see these lines here. They start just past the headlight there, right around here, and it fades in and runs all the way across to create that belt line. Then you can see the curvature here so it curves in, it's kind of an S, it's pretty classic, everybody does it. Um, that creates these varying lights right here. So you can, if you're looking at that yellow line right there, what you're probably seeing from that perspective is that line is doubling because it's being reflected twice. Then below that, you have this hard crease there that creates the in-cut for the running board and everything else. So um, Mercedes went with a running board instead of a rocker panel. The running board is functional, right? You guys, these guys step on it. Uh, my kids are stepping on it when they're getting in and out. Aiden's favorite part, though. Um, I think I think I like the uh, design of the tires because I like the way this fits with the tires and also these uh, these lines here. I think fit well with the logo. And so overall, I think the car fits around the tires and especially the bottom. I like how the top kind of matches with it, but like they're not the same, but they look similar enough to mm -hmm. go with each other. Well. Yeah, it's, it's a matching motif. These flares, especially those, because they flare out a lot more than the ones in front, um, they create a lot of dynamism around this tire, and they kind of accentuate the space, which gives it a more muscular look. Also, they're very close to the corner. You see how close they are to that corner? That promises maneuverability, um, which is a cool thing. It's a good thing, and this is a pretty maneuverable car. Overall, I really like the shape. I like that the roof rails are there. Even though these in particular are not functional, you can get functional replacements for them. Uh, Mercedes dealerships sell those. So if you need the crossbars for a functional roof panel or roof bars, you can get it with that. So that's the design. Let's look at the rear end, talk about the cargo a little bit, and then we'll get on the inside. So the back side of the GLE 450E here, um, you probably can't quite see it. You maybe can see the top of it. There is a tow hitch on this. The tow rating, I have no idea what it is, but I'll put it on the screen somewhere so you'll see it. Uh, what you can see though, is that they went with pretty straight up SUV back here. Very little rake to this window. The angle is pretty slight. Uh, this is not as protruding as you see on some, so it's not quite as sporty. They're not aiming for that. They're aiming for more of a capability look more than they are a fast paced look. Even though zero to sixties in this are like six seconds. Electric motors. Anyway, uh, and then this part is pretty flat. So it cuts in for the license plate and uh, to get it, you know, to put in handles and stuff, but it's a pretty flat, flat face overall. When you open it, good size cargo space. So with me reaching in, I can touch the back seats, but I got to lean a little bit to do it. That's a fair amount of cargo space. The bag right there, that's the plug for plugging it in. Uh, and then there's a storage spot over here that has your tire inflation kit, stuff like that. You cannot access underneath this because underneath this is where the batteries lie uh, and the drivetrain for the, uh, the electric motor sitting on top of that axle. So this is what you get, but there are four D hooks, one on each corner right there, there, and there. So you can tie some stuff down. It does have a cargo cover. You can take or leave that, it's up to you. Um, there is no place to store it in here, so if you pull it out, you need to put it somewhere. You can set it crosswise, but then it's it's making your floor uneven, so I don't know if you want. And then, what I like is luxury rides like this. Those seats fold down just by touching some buttons over here. I love that. It's way easier than sitting here trying to figure out what lever to pull or having to walk around and push stuff. That's annoying. So, 60-40 uh, split on the rear seat. I said that wrong. Uh, 
40-20-40 split on the rear seat. So the middle part can fold down all by itself, which gives you a pass through if you're carrying skis, snowboard, something like that. Let's go talk about the, it may be a bicycle. I just thought of that. Let's go talk about the uh, interior. You can see my head now. Um, so the interior of the car, I think looks very nice. Uh, we have these kind of leather, leather-like seats. Um, I really like this. You can see the back kind of fit, fits your uh, back arc right here. Um, they're, the angle I enjoy because it makes it, doesn't force you to sit straight up. You can kind of relax here. Um, in the middle, we have cup holders. Uh, they're, you know, average sized. Uh, we have a bigger and a smaller one here, so that's nice. Um, you can see we have two uh, USB-Cs down here. Uh, we have some storage. Uh, we have pretty usual fans. We have, I, I've always liked these, the uh, kind of storage things here, which I think look good. Uh, good good floor space. I can stretch out my legs pretty far. Um, and yeah, you can see we have, uh, it's, it's nice to have these in the back. So that's back and forth. Here's your back and then your headrest. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really comfortable here. Uh, the windows, I like the way you can you can see almost everything from here specifically and yeah we have more storage down here uh pretty normal door handle but yeah i think i think the inside's really nice so up in the front uh same story very comfortable seating very adjustable uh Lots of options. The seats up here are heated and cooled and all of that good stuff. Um, as per usual on Mercedes, there is a button on the door where I can push that on this driver's side and control the passenger side seat. So I can adjust it, move it if I need to. Saves you from having to reach over and across and lean across and do all of that. Um, very easy control layout. If you're familiar with Mercedes, you're familiar with what this looks like. Um, this is the uh, shifter up here. You have paddle shifters because everything is in NASCAR now. Um, and you have, so you have full control over those nine gears. That's cool, I guess. Um, but really, how often do you use that stuff in a car like this? Anyway, um, for the most part, it is extremely easy to drive and very comfortable. Feels really good. One little confusing point is on the bottom of the door, there's release buttons. One of them is for the fuel port and the other one is for the back hatch. They're right next to each other. Very easy to hit the wrong one. And it's annoying that neither one of those is for the electric plug-in. The electric plug-in, you just tap it and it pops open. I don't understand why both the fuel ports don't just do that. That would be way easier. But, you know, Little things. There's always got to be something wrong. Can't be perfect. That doesn't exist. Unless you're Elon Musk. Then I'm pretty sure it exists. But I doubt it. Anyway. So, uh, overall, very fun to drive. Very good vehicle. And I really do like the controls. Even these like hokey touch sensitive controls that are on the steering wheel. I normally hate those, but I actually like them on this uh, because they just make sense. So it's easy to figure out what you're doing. The left side is cruise control and driver information. The right side is uh, your infotainment and telephone and stuff like that. So it's really easy to understand what you're doing when you do those. And when you hover your finger over it, your driver information display shows that button to tell you that's the button I, f I feel your finger on are you gonna so that you know that you're touching the right one before you actually activate it. So neat little things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. There's a couple of good drink holders, uh, wireless charging up here, and lots of AC vents. Oh, and Burmeister stereo. In this one, it could use a little bit of tuning, but it's actually, but I mean, it's Burmeister. So it's awesome regardless. It could just be slightly more awesome if it was slightly tuned a little bit better for this vehicle. But this vehicle is very quiet on the road, so the stereo does a really good job of covering up what isn't even there, because there's no noise. <laughs> it's great. Uh, wood anyway. You like this? Uh, yeah. I think, I think it goes well with the dark colors of the car. Um, it doesn't cause too much contrast, and I think it just, it's kind of a smooth transition between these. And I like, I like the design of everything being here with the straight line here and then all your stuff being down here. I think it, I think it all fits together and it, it feels, it feels like a luxury car if I look at it. I could tell this is, yeah, this it is feels, cheap. feels luxurious. What I like is the fact that it allows them to do something that's black without being like the usual. Yeah. So it's not just a big black 
whole thing with with a lot of chromed accent. It, it adds texture. Yeah, it adds a lot of good look and te texture is a great word for that. And this uh, it sets off these chrome accents. Makes them look really good. And the chrome isn't bright chrome. It's it's kind of a brushed. So it's more of a more of a almost nickel, but not quite nickel. There's not enough yellow in it to be nickel. So it's a really cool look. I really like it. Mercedes is really good at that stuff. They know how to make interiors. I don't know what these are for though. Like these are supposed to be like OMG bars, but like, do you really need these? Yeah. And we have some up here anyways. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right, let's go wrap this up. Okay, so that's it for this one. This is a beautiful, beautiful ride. Um, and like I said, it'll be on, on the market a couple months here, give or take, and really, really well done. This is Mercedes' first time doing a real plug-in hybrid. They've had them before, but they were always short range, you know, like 20 miles-ish. Uh, the CLE, I think it was, was one of the first. This is a huge step forward. This is a usable plug-in hybrid. So very, very well done. So that's what we got. What car is this? Uh, this is the 2023 Mercedes GLE 450E. There you go. It's a beauty of a car, really. So all right, that's what I got. This has been Aaron and Aiden. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Subscribe.